Well, hello everybody. The president is in Hermosillo and or Sonora. As you know, every day I go from 6 to 7 in the morning. At this time in the, the city in Mexico, we meet the integrants of the cabinet, security cabinet. But today, uh, do, we have to do this evaluation here in Sonora, where we met with that purpose, the members of the cabinet of security. And we are accompanied by the governor, Claudia Fabloid of Sonora, that always has been working in a coordinated manner with the federal government. And we have very good relations. As of today, we are going to try from Hermosillo, Sonora, four matters that we consider to be important. The matter of security, the matter of who is who in the prices of combustibles, in, in this case gasoline, which we do every Monday at a level, a uh, national level. And also, we are going to inform you regarding the road that we are constructing here in Sonora, which is in the process of being constructed. But we have also started with a participation of the uh, This is another set I have. Uh, when we have dealt with these matters and we uh, opened the session of questions and answers, it makes us very happy to be in Sonora. This state, which is prosperous and progressive of our country, the state has been uh, one, uh, this was one of the states of the uh, Mexican Revolution, not only because they uh, um, started in Sonora, due to the antecedents, the precursor of the revolution, which was that celebrated um, um, uh, something that happened in Sonora that they're very happy to be there. So now he's letting this, the governor talk. Hello to all of you and Mr. President for coming here for the cabinet meeting the way you do every day. And of course, we're taking, uh, doing the famous morning conference here in Hermosillo. And thank you to all the media that's accompanying us and those that are coming from outside. And you've gotten very good climate, actually. We're here with the news that we're joined clearly specifically for the matter of security because we know it's something that we're, we're below the media of the um, safety, but when it has to do with homicide, even though we're below the median, we still have done, we've been established better. Seven out of 10 in Sonora are done with firearms 
and we it has a lot to do with organized crime and we have a lot of work to do in a ma uh, organized manner and uh, we appreciate the arrival of the National Guard, the Marines, and the Army in the cities of Hermosillo and Casete. As you know, there was also a meeting of security where the, uh, all the uh, cabinet meeting people were there to establish the There's a lot to do. There's something to do with uh, organized crime having areas. But they say that actually things have gotten better. I don't say it, but it's in the national um, registry where we do have it's a high impact of homicide due to organized crime in our uh, geographic location. And, and due to our um, a proximity to the U.S. and due to the people that consume, especially the youth consuming alcohol. And thank you for all coming. And she's mentioning all the people that are there. So they're also working on the road, the famous four uh, lane road and it should be finished shortly. And very good day to all. So that I just wanted to show you a possible setup that I could do. Um, this is my regular setup, um, but well, they're changing. So, the, so um, due to the analysis that we did in the state, well, the municipalities with most uh, homicides, uh, which has um, an extensive interaction with the U.S., and it's got a very big territory where there's um, criminal groups that have disputes in the areas that are under operation. And we've identified that there is an inefficiency of the security uh, that was measured due to the deficit that has a 40% deficit of uh, police in the state. But besides that, it has 27 place in crime of, of all the crimes in Mexico. But in order so that you could understand the state, we can see where um, there's a support for the National Guard and support for operations. Oh, my word. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to find the best setup for you. And it ain't this one. Um, that's the regular one. <laughs> this is the one I wanted to show so that you could have the full screen and not have me blocking you. I'm going to move up. Sorry, I'm still trying my new setup here. So, uh, oh my word. So the National Guard, has, they will be doubling them when they've grown in their uh, to eight coordinations. Right now they they have 186 units that are working there, and we expect 1,800 by the end of the year. The federal police is in transition, and they've got 600 men in the state. 
So general, so they've almost got 11,000 um, state and municipal. So what we've identified is problematic, and we also want to have penetration of the organized crime as part of the strategy to implement, we've centered in five uh, municipalities, Guaymas and Navajoa, and naval personnel will be the, the uh, heading those uh, areas, and we'll have additional personnel. And this will also allow us that within the price of administration, we can initiate on that the Secretary of Marine, they will participate in this process. And as of today, in Guaymas and in Palme, they will make the confidential evaluations in those two municipalities. They will have to be the having to attend the 40% uh, deficit so th of, of personnel that they need to have. Another recommendation is the intelligence agencies in coordination with all levels of government in order to, to have an impact on the operations and the logistic of criminal uh, uh, organized crime. And thank you. So I think they're going to help them up there. <laughs> he hasn't wanted to stop working, even though he's got a broken foot. <laughs> Hello to everyone. Uh, who's who in prices of gas is today? Regular gasoline. The highest price with the highest margin that we found in Baja California is a margin of 350 per liter, which is 60, 2162 per liter. And the best one was in Agua Dulce with a price of under oh, 1761 per li liter to the public. In case uh, regarding to uh, premium prices, so they had the highest price, Leon Guanajuato, $21.99, and the, the price to the public was $21.99, and the best price was $19.29 for premium. Now that's under a dollar, you guys. So next, the uh, combustible diesel uh, in Michoacán, a price to the public of 23 pesos per liter, which is a little over a dollar, but still a lot more than everybody else's. But the lowest price is in uh, Central Tabasco, which is 19.52, which is right around a dollar, I believe. When it comes to the margins that are highest and the most economical are and they've maintained this ability to, to retain their prices, they, they had 2,261 that were presented using a, a app um, and two stations did not allow the verification so we immobilized um, 26 um, pumps so the groups refused they refused to uh, have their um, pumps checked, so that means that they're up to no good. <laughs> 
So if they won't allow themselves to be verified, mo most likely they're cheating the people. So there's 94,000 um, people that have complained through the app that they have for notifying when they suspect that there is criminal, um, um, well, that they're doing something wrong in the gas pumps. The most expensive in San Francisco, where it's 23 pesos in San Pancho. And diesel, 1929 in Chiapas, Tabasco. And 23 pesos in Churumuco, Michoacán. So who's who in the prices of gas? We found in the tanks 19 per super gas, 4 uh, pesos margin. So, and the most economical one was in San Diego, Jalisco, which is a margin of 2 pesos. And the price for the public was 750. <laughs> he says it's a good thing it doesn't have an accent or it would say some dirty word. <laughs> the most in expensive per cylinder is 20.32 per kilo, which is still a dollar or around a dollar. The most economical is offered by Tadimboro Michoacán, which got a margin of four pesos, and it's only 13.68 per kilo. And that's the price to the public. And this, we verified 30 stations, uh, gas stations. 15 had infractions, and three denied a uh, and we're not forced to verify, so they get closed down temporarily. And out of 210, uh, they weren't measuring properly, so so they've been immobilized. Um, four vehicles out of seven that were not having the actual correct uh, weight or amount of gas that they're supposed to have. So if they don't comply with the norm normals, they, they get deactivated. So they're trying to cut down the corruption in gas because there was a lot of cheating and people were not getting their money's worth in the gas and um, combustibles. He's going to make a brief um, amplification. They're making a four-road uh, highway or freeway. There's 651 kilometers. So, so there's the um, numbers on the longitude, and it's got a few, um, how should I say, um, bridges, and it's got some, I don't know what, oh, that drains, 2,600 drains, and that's 1,300 bridges. What are the benefits that have been reported with this uh, road? Out of 2 million uh, inhabitants, they've, they said they've saved around two hours uh, on their trips. And it's reduced the number of accidents from 600 to 200, or by 600 to 200. And on the 21st of August, it, 
They had 35 um, contracts of which they have four still pending. On the 30th of November last year, they still needed 40.3 kilometers, and then they found two deviations, 22 deviations in the, in the uh, route. There's 300 meters, and one so those are the areas they still need to um, work on those areas. So the amount is, um, so that's the number of million pesos. So actually billion, because <laughs> this is 3,000 million, 6,000 million, which is billion, right? <laughs> We have five deviations at, at this time, and we have 98.6%. We commit ourselves um, to finish by today with the whole road, but there was things that have uh, forbidden us from finishing the road. We still need 1.1 kilometers and 800 meters. Um, some of it, we've had uh, problems with zoning and people not letting them get in. But we have also had social problems and local problems which have forbidden us to do our job. And so we're working on those problems. And we've had 30 days of work. Twenty days to attend to the zone with the problems with. Um, we need uh, seven more kilometers in another area, which has. Um, there's some that are having a problem attending to some of these problems, but we're trying to come resolve the problems so that we could, we would have liked to finish what we were uh, hoping to have finished by now. But believe me that very soon we will um, finish the road. But as of now, we still need a little more time to finish the road. And we will try to resolve all these problems very soon. Well, now this is what we can inform you on. But just as a compliment, we want to say that the federal government has been supporting in Sonora, in Sonora this road is part of the program of investment from the federal. And when we conclude this road and to finish the Lake Pilares, that is also very important for the region for Alamos, and to be helping in the whole um, um, borderline area, because in the cities and municipalities of Sonora, and the um, they've reduced the the taxes over rent from 20 percent and so Eva I believe it's our tax went down to eight percent in San Luis Nogales they are now taking uh, some programs for development urban development and in the each of these municipalities we are converting around 50 million um, pesos for these areas. Also, to tell you, 
that the majority of uh, uh, older adults in Sonora are now already receiving their pension at 2,550 pesos bimenstrual, which also um, thousands of uh, children that are disabled are also receiving a pension due to the situation of their disability that they are, you know, dealing with. And we are giving grants to the, um, like, preschools and, uh, like, places where they daycare. That's the word I was trying to think of, daycare. So there was a daycare um, that burnt down, and he's had to deal with that. But so all the public schools are getting grants, all the, each student of 1,600 bimenstrual. And they also giving grants to um, um, people with um, um, not enough uh, resources. And we are also contracting um, a youth that had no job or education. They're getting job as apprentices in Sonora. And all of this in coordination with the government of the state. And we are also thinking of doing that with the governments and municipalities. This is just an information that's complementary, that helps a lot to contextualize and to have, because we have things uh, to do with information specifically, like the road and other important matters uh, that have to do with attention here in our country. So now we're going to open up the session for questions and answers. And we're going to do it as, as usual, the way we do it in other states. One question from uh, media that's local and one for the national media. Those that go there to the conferences of Sonora, of course, now they're not going to ask because they've already had the opportunity to ask. They've already exercised that right. But it is not prohibited. If they want to ask a question again, they can do so. And so we're going to start now. She's from Sonora, and I've also gone. I have two questions. One is, thank you for letting me speak. One is regarding security. The statement that uh, Segura is in better uh, or is not as bad as other uh, places in violence. It's a discourse that is old and was said by the, uh, that they've said for years that, uh, that they were, they're saying this is, this is something that was said before by the previous governments, but, but someone who's uh, saying that he's trying to push forward the fourth transformation. Why? Why are you saying that if, so that these violent, uh, so they, they he says, why do, are the media been told not to talk, touch that matter? And yet, that's my first question. And then I want to ask another one. No. We are not hiding anything. We inform every single day regarding this matter. And in the case of Sonora, the general informed as to the number of incidences of crime 
which Sonora is below the median for the na nation. That is the data that we have. But besides that, that information is, is public dominion. Where we have a problem is in the case of homicides, where it has to do with Sonora. It has grown. And what, in particular, what has to do with homicides has grown. And that's what we found out. And, and that's why we're taking actions in order to reinforce the police of the municipalities and statewide. Uh, we've sent out the National Guard, and we're working on that problem to confront that problem. And in Navajoa, they have not accepted. They haven't wanted to um, accept the, um, the ones that were assigned to be uh, monitoring or helping them. What's the problem there? Because they said they were going to put stations. What information I have is that there's four municipalities where they have come to an agreement with the armed forces and they're helping with public security, especially to reinforce municipal police. Yes, in the case that you're mentioning in Guaymas, and it's pending in effect in Navajoa, but we're working on that. It's about to be fixed. It's an agreement with the authority of the municipal municipality. But yes, we are working on that. The other question I had was, yesterday, the Congress of the state, well, I had already asked this question, but yesterday in the state, in local Congress, they gave a new success, and they imposed in Morena a coordinator and a president of the Congress that, that the people curiously did not vote on. So you as a promoter of this uh, party, what is your opinion? Or do you give it as a loss, like in case of Sonora in Baja California, where Morena has has been taken by the um, minority because yesterday the PRIs and all the parties he, he assigned uh, something about so what, what, do you, what is your opinion regarding that and are they going to be cleaning that and the they're saying that there's people in the uh, Morena mm, party, which was his party, and they're asking if there's what he's going to do, what's his opinion, because they're not um, doing the right thing or something in the party. What is your opinion and your uh, position on this? Well, I have no opinion because it doesn't belong to me to have an opinion. I am the president of Mexico. I represent all Mexicans. And I cannot act like they did before, like the chief of the party. There is no party of state. I cannot intervene in party matters. Nor do, can I interfere in uh, things that have to do with uh, unions. It, the executive power is not going to be the power of powers like it used to be. That they used to, they could even, because they were over the judicial and the uh, 
uh, legislative power, but that's how it used to be. Since Porfirio Diaz, the revolution couldn't even handle that and take it away. These practices that were actually illegal and illegitimate. But we are inaugurating a new phase. So no more interfering in matters that belong to social organizations, parties. We need to be respectful of the powers and the sovereignty of the states. That's what we are taking forth and into practice. My recommendation, not only for militants from Morena party, but all the uh, party members and all citizens is that we make a commitment of making democracy an effective um, part that within all of us that we will be able to construct an authentic and true democracy and that fraud, uh, fraud uh, will disappear and there be no ma manipulation, no censoring, no purchasing of votes, no trafficking with the poverty of the people, not to utilize the money of the government to favor a party or any candidate, that at last we have the practice of of Lilial and, Mad and Mad Madero, the uh, apostle of democracy, that elections be clean and free. But that depends on all of us. Now, for example, we advanced a lot because now it is a grave crime to have electoral fraud, like it is a grave crime, which was an advancement uh, that it is also crime uh, to be a corruption. Would it, it would be unbelievable that for 25 years they did not consider a grave crime for corruption. In 1994, they reformed the penal code in order to not consider grave crime uh, or corruption to be a grave crime. And if they went to jail, they could come out with bail. Or, or they, they had to find some other crime that would be grime, like laundering, um, um, you know, money. But now fraud is, electoral fraud is a grave crime. But there's sometimes things that we cannot intervene in. And we all have to help. Because these are inertias. And it is not easy to shake uh, years, decades of, of these anti-democratic acts. But yes, we are going to make a transformation. Because a lot of people want there to be a true change. So we are going to the national one now. Uh, where it was um, sulfuric acid that was in the, what are you doing regarding the uh, negotiations regarding that uh, sulfuric spill? We've already had a, a table of agreements with, with Grupo Mexico and representatives from mining uh, workers and also environmentalists that we are now about to have these meetings and have a evaluation regarding the damages and the com complying of the of the uh, commitments in case of the affected uh, areas like Sonora 
and the spill that affected Rio Sonora. Also, what happened in Guaymas, and to realize all of this. And I inform you that now I've already had an interview with the director and president of Grupo Mexico, Herman Larrea, he's the president. And I'm also meeting with the directors of miners. And I am talking with environmentalists. And I'm asking uh, Victor Manuel Toledo, uh, the Secretary of Environment, uh, to attend this matter specifically. Did you come to inaugurate um, the road that they said was going to be done in six, uh, 60 days? He said, no, I'm not going to give a date anymore. Because before I said April or May, and they couldn't, and then we got a new date, and again, no. So, so now the engineer says, he recommends to me that I not be giving him a date. Because then what happens is, every time we indicate a date, they pressure us more. And they detain our work. And, and they even extort us. Like, you know, there's a date. Since they know there's a date, then they, they have these uh, actions to um, stop the group the uh, acts. So I'm asking all of you to start behaving well. Stop asking for cuts, extortions, threatening, corruption. All of that. It is not valid anymore. It is seen badly. It's like like the corrupt one. What, that you think, yuck, it's nasty. Now, these days, to be corrupt is to bring in a, a stain that you cannot take away with all the water in the ocean. Before, they even used to applaud them. Hey, they used to say, oh, how intelligent he is. Look how he took advantage of the opportunity. He took to the government. He bought himself properties, ranches, properties. Uh, apartments in the uh, foreign places, and now he's owner of haciendas and lands. And son, my son, study so that when you get grow up, you can be like so and so, a reverend thief. But that is not acceptable anymore. That is not in style anymore. It is out of style. What is in style is to maintain your values, morals, or morals, <laughs> cultural values, spiritual values. And now, who is valuable is not who has the most. The one that is most valuable is the one that has behavior that acts with honesty and correctness and principles. The one that wants to leave their children poverty but not dishonor. That is what is worth something, actually. And that's how it's going to be. Now the corrupt people are out. Out. Let them look for psychologists to treat themselves of that illness, of ambition, to the money, because otherwise they're not going to be able to be tranquil. They'll always be very nervous, like they can't handle it, like anxiety, like there's some that do not accept the new reality, and they would like that we would continue with the same way that we continue to steal and be bandits officially, but that has ended. And it's ended. And now with uh, one of the ladies. Hello, Mr. President. 
from Sonora, Chronic Mexicali and T near Tijuana. I've got a question regarding to the four uh, lanes here. Uh, and so what's going on with the um, being behind? And they said something about the mining uh, modifications. So when are they going to present these modifications? And what modification, modifications are they? And will there be investigations for state and municipal governments regarding the use of these resources? So we'll let the engineer ask, answer the first question, I'll ask, answer the second. In all the works, we are working to finish the works. And all the irregularities, we're putting them to their um, property in, um, agencies in case of all the uh, roads and the works have been like that. There is no problem with the construction. But in the north area, we're trying to see what, why was there this problem with conduction. And in case the, the irregularities have to do with the companies, we'll have to deal with them and each with their respective agencies. Look here, um, there is a, a fund that has been destined to the municipalities where there's exploitation of mines. This was gained four to five years ago with a new legislation because many, uh, for a long time, they didn't even pay taxes, these mining companies, for the extraction of the minerals. It was a uh, fight that we took for many years, and uh, we were in the opposition. And we gained that they now have to pay taxes in order to benefit the communities that are affected or the close ones to the mines. But Sonora is a state that is the mining that is very important. And for that reason, it corresponds to Sonora around a million uh, pesos or a thousand million pesos. And we have not been able to exercise it because we want that it actually get there, the money to the people. There is this bad experience that we've had, not just in the case of Sonora, but other places where we would transfer the money and we would give the money to the states and the states would give it to the municipalities and they would not invest it in helping the uh, support the mining uh, com um, communities. But they used it for other purposes, this fund. So now there's a controversy regarding the management of these funds in the judicial power, which is now res about to resolve. And we are going to help with that failure with the judicial power. But yes, the funds are going to come to the communities, the mining communities of Sonora these thousand million pesos because we what we want is that they get directly to the people that there be no intervening in the management of these funds that's how we're acting in every every way and i said it yesterday in the informant my assessors the people from the town would tell me don't send us the money through the government because they steal it. Please be careful. Give it to us directly. And that's what we're doing in everything. Because we used to give lots of money to the organizations, 
social organizations, civil organizations, organizations, even if it seems paradoxical, that were not governmental agencies. That's how they're called. And as it turns out, they were getting funds from the government. Or, or the government agencies, and it never got to the people. So now we're being cautious that these uh, monies get to the people. But yes, we are going to give the funds to the municipalities of the mining towns. I do calculate that in this year, before the end of this year, they will be exercising these funds. So now, uh, someone from Mexico. After here, are you going to meet with the parents, with the uh, parents from the daycare? Is this a private meeting? There's no one in jail for this tragedy that was horrible. What are you going to tell them in um, uh, matters of attention that some still need medical attention, not just here, but outside? And justice, so much time has happened that I want you to know, what are you going to say to them? What are we going to do? What are we going to expect from this meeting? And yesterday, your information of uh, the government, you said you said the Mexicans, the, the migrants that are um, in living here is in the U.S. that are sending uh, money. What would be of our Mexico if we did not get that money from that? What, if, what would it be if we didn't have this money from them? I am going to be having in a meeting effectively and after this meeting with you guys, with mothers and fathers of that, of that ABC daycare and the mother and fathers of the babies that lost their lives in that fire. And it's a response to the first uh, meeting that we had which I agreed that I would be coming back in Hermosillo and that we would meet. And they did make some uh, um, requests that we are now complying with from that first meeting in general, where it corresponds to, to the supports for the families, for the attention of the children that require of special attention that were affected that are now in a situation of health that's difficult and the time has passed and that all of this now has been a result. I made a recommendation to the Social Security that they assume their responsibility fully for the attention for the parents and the, and the fathers of that daycare. And it is pending this process, or judicial process, to reopen the case in order to um, castigate the responsible parties. And so at the moment, it's a recommendation regarding this matter and we are asking that they help and participate so that we can um, make do the investigation 
without obstacles. That there not be influentialism involved. That they act along with the law and that there be justice. And that is in general what we are doing. And that is what we are going to be talking about with them. And I will be accompanied by the director of uh, social services and the subsecretary of government and the secretary Cordero and Alejandro Encinas. And we're going to work with them. What was the other thing you asked? Oh yeah, what what would it, what about the Mexican people? What if we didn't get the money from them? The economy of Mexico benefits very much from these remittances. On the first six months of this year, our uh, countrymen sent to their families more than $18,000 million. We estimate that this year we are going to receive more than $35,000 million pesos. I'm sorry, dollars of remesas. Uh, which is remittances, which is something that's very important. But because with this, we reactivate a lot of the popular economy. It's a money that comes to millions of families, and it is what has helped to sustain many people. I would say it's the principal investment for the people of the, of the towns. Or we also have now what we are now investment, investing in all the uh, well-being programs that also help the people that are impoverished, the humble people. And what they do, which the people in, Mex in Mexico are the working people and they plant, they produce, uh, their uh, own cons what they consume themselves. So the money that uh, millions of Mexicans uh, are able to live with a little bit of well-being. But that's why it's very important to have the support of our countrymen, migrants. And that's why we need to support them and protect them. They are our heroes. And now, if you ask me, what should I do uh, in the future? I think that even, even with all the important of, of these um, money, the most decisive thing or the most transcending thing would be that the Mexican not find themselves in that where they're obligated to immigrate, that they, if they leave the country, they do it because they want to, not be out of necessity, like so many did, so many of our countrymen that are now on the other side of this, um, are, that it be optional, not forced. And that's why we want to create conditions so that Mexican people can work and be happy where they were born, where their customs are, where their cultures are. It's a complete change. Why was this ph phenomenon happen, this migratory phenomenon? They, we used to even have 500,000 per year that left from Mexico in this period of the neoliberal period. So now what we want is that that we can develop our country and that the people not find themselves obligated to migrate. And it is a complete change. And that's why we're returning to the field. And that is why we are supporting the productive activities and well-being in our own uh, people. It's a different model. 
In the previous governments, they even used to say, let's go prepare uh, uh, nurses because in the U.S., they're going to have lots of older population that is going to be needing attention, and we're going to train our Mexicans to go work over there as gardeners or nurses. But we don't want that anymore. Yes, it is a um, you know blessing to have those remittances because even though they left, they went to find a life risking everything. Now they are helping us. So without those remittances, we would be worse? Yes, we would be worse. Because there's two things with which we've advanced. Of course, the government is doing their part like never before in supporting the economy, popular economy. Before, the money was either stolen or it stayed within uh, the government itself for the expenses, these expensive... Uh, uh, now the funds are being liberated for the people, especially for the poor people. It's not a small thing that there's... Um, Eight million people are now getting money and are having eight million gr in grants. That never before in the uh, Mexican uh, government had that happen. Two um, um, uh, entrances of money are very important, the remittances and uh, foreign uh, commerce, which when it has to do with the popular economy and what is being being done by uh, the uh, commerce. Uh, to promote more and in this we are devoting more time. Thank you very much. Someone from Sonora. And now we're asking a different gender. Julio Sanchez and Radio AMLO in Arizona. Are you aware of what's happening in our consulates? We have some situations that are happening in the consulates. The consulates we're supposed to be defenders, but we're finding, lamentably, that they're doing some of the things like the old regimen, and that's a preoccupation of the Mexicans in the U.S. And there's people in there that are in Tucson, Arizona, where they're in there. Uh, there's people that are working there that are implicated in acts of corruption. And in the case of the city of Houston, where the council uh, does refuses to to uh, receive the Mexican community, my question is in the sense of, are you aware of what is happening? And a question for the our governor. In the state of Arizona, they are going to uh, uh, give licenses for conduction. And the Mexicans, uh, we feel that in the state of Arizona, they have no validity. And it's being uh, forced by the uh, state of Arizona. And we would like to ask about that. And uh, related to the consulates, I'm taking note and I'm going to ask the Secretary of External Relations that they inform regarding this situation which you are mentioning. And it, it is, yes, it is our uh, priority for us. 
uh, for the consulates that Mexico has to protect our countrymen and that they act like defenders of the migrants in our, of our countrymen and our people. And there's a renovation that is taking place the consulates of professional people that has convictions and that they be protected our, our, our countrymen that's what we're working on They're, the politicians are not going to consulates anymore if a politician had a bad day they would send him to, to a consulate or an embassy but we're working on uh, preventing that in the federal government and they would send them as a delegate somewhere when they were misbehaving and they sent them somewhere anywhere but no more delegations in the states that also needs to be very clear that they had 40 or 50 delegates in the states and it's very hard for us to deactivate all these things because it was a bad habit they had. But still, there's internal resistances, but we made the decision. It's the same thing we did by canceling the 51 offices of the gov federal government in the foreign uh, countries, the offices that were pro-Mexico, that were in the big uh, um, places of the world and they said it was supposed to be to promote Mexico neither here nor in any part of the country are there offices that are pro-Germany or pro-France or pro-Italy or pro-US which might have a possibility of that due to its vicinity it was even ridiculous to have these offices because of the wastefulness. They would put their friends over there, their family. And so oh, we're correcting all these things and we're going to ask Marcelo to explain regarding this matter. And we're going to take the data so that we can amplify the information and you can help us because the purpose is precisely that we all help each other that so that things will change. And this meeting and this circular dialogue has this purpose. It helps me very much. It helps us because people let us know and they um, give pronouncements. And I assure you that even though we had some disc, uh, uh, some change of time, but we're still pending in the whole country. And the public servants, let's see, what are they going to say about me now? What matter are they going to deal with? And I'm always asking them to be paying attention so, so that we don't have to remind them. Like this case, you need to take note the Secretary of Foreign Relations, and they need to be able to give a response. And now he's going to let the governor speak, but he has to leave because he has to go to the mothers and fathers of that daycare. And I also need time for them. So all in all, we'll meet it tomorrow. And uh, the case of Sonora, I just want to say we're very happy and I will return and I will be visiting Sonora 
I will be in all the regions of the state. So it's not just this meeting and then I'm done and you won't see me, no, my hair. But no, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be staying in Sonora. And this is a state that I've said that is very progressive, a state with people that is exceptional and hardworking, good people. So now he's letting her talk. All right, we're done. Okay, so we're ending it there. Thank you very much. And um, we'll, um, that was yesterday's uh, meeting, which was done at a different time. And I didn't realize he actually did one. I thought they, it got canceled. So I went ahead and did that one first so I don't get behind. And then I'm going to do the one for today just a little bit later because I'm going to need a little break to eat. But I'll be back. Thank you. See you later.